everybody. I want to welcome you out to the show today. Uh, I am really excited about this interview today. Um, I got a really good guy. Uh, been friends with him for a couple years now as I get situated. Um, who's got a real good uh, recovery story. He's very active in the South Jersey area. Um, and he does, you know, do a lot of meetings, uh, sponsors guys. Um, and I've kind of actually got to see him kind of go through it the second time around. Um, I'm sure we'll get into that today at some point. But, um, you know, I'm real excited to have you here, dude. And uh, I'm going to introduce Chris P. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, thanks for having me. Cool, man. Uh, I know, uh, you know, you had a real busy day today and you had a bunch of stuff going on. And uh, before we really get started on this show today, um, you know, I do want to take a second to uh, send some prayers out to the guys and girls that went down yesterday in uh, Westmoreland County out by Pittsburgh. Um, it, apparently it was really bad, uh, like 30, car, uh, 30 bike uh, accident. Um, and then also uh, on Sunday, um, there was a really bad accident on 95 in Philly with uh, a bunch of riders that went down uh, for the Shriners toy run. So, you know, I want to send out a some prayers for those uh those riders guys and girls that that went down and uh hopefully you guys have a uh you know a, a good recovery um so with that note man thanks for stopping by dude i know you're real busy today uh but i appreciate you coming out by let's uh let's kind of get into where um you know i i met you i guess probably about four years ago now and at that point uh you were uh you kind of coming back into your recovery uh, yeah. part and, and uh you know i know you had a, a bunch of years before that um right how many years did you have before that i had seven years okay yeah. and then so now you have what uh four yeah four four years okay cool um so like kind of fill these guys in like how did it get started for you like how'd you how did you start the whole running and gunning process i'm not asking you to give me like drink one through you know whatever <laughs> but Hey man, like me, I, I I was before sixth grade or after sixth grade, there was a party in the woods and that's how it started for me. So, yep, you know. yeah, that's how it started for a lot of us. Well, I mean, I'll pick up from, uh, you know, the relapse. I mean, it was pretty much, uh, the typical story. Um, you know, I was very involved. I was in the, any, uh, committee of young people's, we used to do a lot of stuff and, you know, I was, I was single. All I had to do was go to meetings, go to work and, you know that was it and that was fun but then you know work happened i got promoted so i got the the good job making the good money i got married i had a kid then i was too busy to you know do anything recovery based and next thing you know you'll never guess what happened mm. i picked up a drink right <laughs> so right. um you know and i, I was kind of in and out a little bit uh for a couple years and then um i finally had the idea that um you know i was gonna separate uh from my wife and uh whatever like mentally i just couldn't handle that and i had the idea that if i me and her went to a different you know county or something like that you know we could just uh i could just drink every day and nobody be bother me because you know i didn't care you know nobody was there to you know police me or worry about what i was doing because no one knew, really knew where i was so uh yeah that, that's what happened there um so, right on yeah. I, I mean look you yeah. know um i think i've mentioned this before um i think that um generally people that 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 have an issue with with a relapse or whatever it, it it tends to happen because you get away from your program whatever your program yeah. is mm -hmm. um you know i think that uh sometimes that you know you take a step away from your program and then all of a sudden that's when shit kind of goes south yeah um as far as the moving away thing you know um i don't know if that is a as a uh an addict mentality or not because i actually did the same thing yeah where i felt like if i moved things would be better ah if i move here man I, yeah. you know i can straight <laughs> some shit out it's like you're running away from something yeah and i don't know if that ever works for anybody yeah. um it may have worked for some people out there i mean who knows uh it's just one of those things where you you kind of in your mind go it's like hey man i'm gonna do the reset yeah nine well, times that's... out of ten dude you're gonna bring the problem with you yeah well, what happened with me it was just you know i was so fueled with resentment because i had you know my parents wanted to be, be a certain way mm -hmm. you know and like i'm trying to you know my wife wants me to be a certain way and i'm just like eh, well i want to drink 
So, I mean, that's what happened there. I basically, when I moved in, um, you know, when we moved back in together at the new place, we actually, for three and a half years, I didn't have a single sober day. And uh, what wound up happening was, uh, you know, I had a hemorrhagic stroke. It's basically, yeah, like the left side and right side of my brain shook hands. Um, I woke up in Cooper Hospital. And, uh, you know, a couple guys that I used to be in the rooms with, they actually were coming out and, you know, hanging out and, you know, checking on me. And, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty bad because, like, they told me, like, uh, apparently, like, I thought Ronald Reagan was president. Like, wow. I, yeah, you know, I thought I lived in Tennessee. Like, right. I had no idea what was going on. So, and I, and I actually, I remember that happening to you. So that's, it's, it's happened to you more than one time. Oh, well, no, no, that, that, that was the, the one time that happened. That was, you know, okay. four and a half years ago. Um, you know, I was in an alarm bed, you know, I, I needed a walker. I couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. Um, they sent me to, uh, Kessler rehab, which is a really, really good rehab. They, um, they put me through everything and got me, you know, you know, mobile again right you know i came out i was in a walker um the doctors told me like i'd never run i'd never ride a motorcycle Mm -hmm. like i was out of the question and but something inside of me because i've always had motorcycles ever since i was probably six years old i had mini bikes and stuff and i was like you know i told myself i was like god is the only one that's going to tell me i'm not going to ride right and uh it's it's kind of a cool story looking back on it because you know i was broke from all that running man i exhausted all options i had no money i wound up getting a frame for you a 1970 xlch and a buddy of mine helped me out with some parts i built built the engine up from scratch and i built this entire bike over the course of a year and i went on the uh a recovery run out of barbs at a uh after having a year sober and uh well i'll back that up as um it was kind of neat because when i wanted to um learn how to ride i had a 10 speed and uh where I lived, there was a like a corral fence that went along the driveway, this long stone driveway. And I used to put on long pants and a long shirt, and I would get on the bicycle and lean against the fence and try to ride the bicycle. Oh, wow. Yeah, I fell down a few times, but I got to the point where I could ride it without hitting the fence. Right. Then I could ride it down the road. Then when I rode it to Wawa, I was like, I'm going to ride again. You know, what's funny about that is uh, when I took the rider safety course in, in uh, Lakewood, New Jersey, yeah. Uh, the very first day, they took you out to the field, and then you had uh, to ride a motor or to, to ride a bicycle. So if you couldn't ride the bicycle, you failed, mm. and they basically sent you home. Oh wow! And uh, they gave you your money back. Hmm. And I was sitting there going, "Damn, why? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> they're gonna right?" Yeah. But it makes sense though, man. If you oh, can't yeah. ride a bicycle, yeah. what makes you think you're gonna be riding a, bi- a motorcycle? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same, uh, same uh, whatever in your brain that makes you want to not fall over. So. But yeah, well, it was, it was neat though because I mean, while I was doing all this and you know getting better, um, you know, I built this this fifth year old Harley, and uh, I remember going on the uh, it was the Maryville run, and uh, I was you know the last bike in the pack, you know, right. and my bike it's you know drum brakes kick start only, you know start trying to start it yesterday so you can have it ready for today you know right but man that thing fired up and i was in the back of the pack and when every every bike pulled out and i got out onto the pike i burst out in tears in my helmet i was like wow i'm fucking riding a motorcycle there you go man and i'm sober right. like that's badass yeah but you so. you also did uh you know you kind of dived right back into the program yeah um, and if I remember correctly, you just had people around you that were constantly like, you know, hey, man, we, we're hitting this meeting. We're hitting this meeting. Yeah. We're doing this. We're doing that. And then, you know, you yeah, kind of. Yeah. I kind of like right from the beginning, I had my little network, um, a couple of gentlemen that actually, you know, came to see me at the hospital. We stayed together. And even still to this day, we get together every Monday night at my house. Right. And, you know, we do our thing. I mean, it was just, you know, it was really cool. We always, you know, stay connected because that was my problem in the past. It was like, I never, I never stayed connected. Like as soon as, you know, work got busy or family got busy, you know, I I figured, well, uh, I did my part, you know, now it's time for somebody else to do it because, you know, I'm too busy. I'm too busy letting life happen, but never realizing that life's only happening because of what I was doing. So. Yeah, and I think it takes a while for people though to to kind of like uh, put two and two together, right? Yeah. Like to understand that that's hey man, this the good things are happening for me because I've straightened myself out. Yeah, um, you know, if if I didn't take the time to fix me, none of this would have happened. Yeah, and um, you know, unfortunately, I think I I feel like there's people out there 
that don't have the light go off and get to the point where some of the good stuff starts to happen. And that's when they, you know, go, go back out doing whatever they're doing. Yeah. You know, the unique part about this program, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. You, you could, it could be a program that you're doing for, you know, the two big ones, uh, Weight Watchers, uh, Gamblers, uh, what there's a sex one. I think there's an alien one, too. I mean, look, <laughs> seriously, it, it's, if you're not working some type of program yeah. to better yourself, yeah. it, it's not going to happen. And, you know, that's one of the things that um, I think when I first started getting sober, um, I had an aunt that, that that was a big wig here in Bucks County, uh, you know, started meetings and all that stuff. So I knew what AA was, but... <sighs> I kind of was like, you know what, man, they're a bunch of, you know, hugging Jesus, blah, 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 like, and I was like, F that, dude, like, you know, I had this giant chip on my shoulder yeah. that I was just like, you know, anti-church, the whole kit and caboodle, like, I, it's one of those things, man, where like, I don't, I don't know why I pushed so hard against it, knowing that I wanted to get sober. Yeah. So... You know, for the person that maybe doesn't know that they want to get sober, you know, how do you overcome that? Yeah. Well, it's like me when I came, I, I first came in when I was probably 22 years old and, you know, I convinced my parents and, you know, and everybody around me like, Hey, listen, like, I'm just, you know, I work construction. I was framing houses back then. I was like, you know, I work construction. That's what we do. We drink, you know, I just party too much, you know, maybe I could, you know, cut it back a little, but you know, and then I was. And I was even seeing a therapist at the time that was, you know, my parents wanted me to do. And like, I told the therapist, well, you know, I just drink cause I'm bored. I got nothing to do. Like, you know, mm. never thinking I had a problem, but even back then, like I had a, uh, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, one time it was like, you know, I was the guy that you know, went out to the bar and, you know, for happy hour. Well, after happy hours over, most people are going home. Yeah. Well, I'm looking, I'm waiting for the next shift to come in so I can drink with them been there dude. yeah then then it's like oh well now it's closing time and now it's like well i don't want to go home it's only two o'clock in the morning you know <laughs> dude I, honestly i just had this conversation today um so at one point i was actually managing a, a, a bar a go-go bar okay i was 21 years old and then so what would happen was i'd work uh i think like four nights a week mm. But I was also going to school during the day. Oh, wow. Um, I was going uh, to, I, you know, I, well, I have a degree in music business. So I was going to school for that. But so I'd work all night till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, get up, do, <laughs> go to school, you know, come home from school, do some homework, whatever, go right back to the bar. So come to find out, I was actually hanging out at the bar all the time because the bartenders would basically not charge me for drinks. And then I would tip 20 bucks, right, to the bartender. So they kept coming, right? Well, the lady that owned the bar, who I, I'm still friends with, by the way, she's a great lady. Um, she bitched at me. What are you doing hanging out at the bar, drinking for free, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and in my mind, this is how conniving this whole thing is. I was like, oh, but yo, wait, 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 wait. I'm actually doing you a favor by, <laughs> by being here. Because now there's a there's an extra bouncer. If there's a problem, I can take care of it. If there's an issue with the taps on the kegs, I could take care of that. <laughs> if you need to, you know, somebody to DJ, I could do that. <laughs> like I had this like twisted. Yeah. It's amazing how we could justify anything, right? <laughs> yeah. But meanwhile, yep. I'm stealing hundreds of dollars <laughs> off of her every <laughs> night drinking yeah. because, yeah, I mean, nothing for nothing, dude. But I was putting them down back then, and yeah. it's like you know. I, it's funny. I, we ju I just had this conversation today. How it was like, you know, uh, how I justified it in my head. How it was supposed to be like, oh, this great thing that I was there. But, mm. y you know, I just remember when you came around. Um, you looked whooped. That's the best way to put it, dude. Yeah. Like you look like a beaten man. Yeah. And now I see you, years later. And you know, obviously, I was part of the the transition, yeah. right? But you're always you're always happy. You're always joking around. You're always having a good time. You f you got color in your face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't look like you 
or are, are shot out. Yeah. And, um, you know, the thing that, that I didn't realize was you actually had some serious health issues too. Yeah. That were, were kind of being brushed over due to your thing. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that, that do that. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we could just have a moment of silence for the loss of my gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I mean, you know, before you got your life turned around, yeah. you know, did you have insurance, health insurance? No. Nah. Right. That's nah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there's yeah. all these things that as we get our life together, the gifts. Oh yeah. And there might be some of those gifts we might take for granted and be like, oh, yeah. oh I got oh, health insurance. Yeah. Hey, but you know what, dude, when you're out there doing it, you didn't have it. Oh, yeah. You know, and those are, those are, you know, I, I, I guess what I'm getting at with you is, you know, not only did you change physically and spiritually with your, with your attitude and everything, uh, but now you're even taking care of your health and, you know, you're, you're going out of your way to, help other people. And I'm not even talking about program wise. I'm talking about like, you're one of those guys that will go out of your way to help another person. You know, you need something done at your house. You know, you need this, you worked on my bike. You know what I mean? Like you, you go out of your way to, to help your fellow human being, which yep. is, you know, it, that's a good thing, man. A lot, not a lot of people yep. are like that. And how much of that was being covered up by your, you know how you were running and gunning oh uh, yeah yeah back then i you know wouldn't care unless i could get something from you and i mean it's it sounds uh another right word i'm looking for i don't want to uh, call myself corny but i always i always tell guys like and uh not to quote neil diamond but um like i like to look at um you know you have two hands you know you have your one hand to reach to the sky and the other hand to reach out to your brothers and sisters hmm. and that's why you got two hands and if you're not using them for that then what do you need them for so which is kind of a, a thought I always try to go by. It's like, you know, if somebody needs something, you help them. Right. You know, because it's like, that's why you're here. If you can't help them, then what are you doing? Right. So uh, now, I mean, you know, you're you're at the point now where you're you're chairing meetings, you're sponsoring guys. Yeah. Um, and you're 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 giving back. And it's and I've been uh, blessed. I actually I, I started a new job not long ago at a um, at a recovery center, and it's neat. I'm I'm actually their maintenance guy. They have a several um like residential homes then they have a clinical building they bust them to every day for their treatment and it's just great because basically every day i'm at this clinical building i go i'm on call i go to these different houses to you know fix a you know leaking faucet or you know broken this or that or broken light switch outlet like just handyman stuff it's, you mm -hmm. know it's kind of like uh it's funny i always joke around like i'm a snyder from one day at a time yeah, you know, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, you know, there's a but, lot of younger people that aren't going to get yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's neat because the a uh, lot of the clients because um they actually asked me uh to start um helping them co-chair a meeting on Fridays and uh, I find speakers and bring them in and uh, it's been really neat because a lot of these clients now like a couple of them they're like the new ones coming in they they think I'm one of the counselors I'm like nah bro I'm, I'm the maintenance I'm just guy maintenance guy <laughs> yeah nah but that's so, awesome man I but mean, yeah it's like like what a gift to be able to you know do that and, and and it's so cool like i joke with my sponsor sometimes like man i'm like i think there's some people out there that might actually look up to me <laughs> so you know what man that's that's part of this right yeah i mean yeah. uh you know now you're that guy in the room that somebody's looking up to uh that's coming in off the street green that look like you looked yeah you know and and but you're willing to help them yeah, I'm you're like... willing to extend a hand yeah and another part of that is like you you know you want up getting involved with the, with with the messengers right yeah you want up being in the club yeah that's uh, I'll never forget uh, you know going out to the diner the one day and it was all because uh, you know somebody invited me and I just felt like going out for a bike ride and getting free breakfast <laughs> and I was like okay yeah. and I never knew sober motorcycle clubs existed was, you know I I never knew and um you know I went there had had a good breakfast met some really cool dudes and I was like oh man this is neat and then. You know, I have my 50-year-old Harley out there. Everybody's got these nice new bikes. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that'd be nice one day, you know? <laughs> and it's... Uh, I remember that, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it was just awesome. And then it's like, wow, look at me now. Like, you know, I rode up here on my friggin', uh, you know, 2021 Street Glide Special that I just put 2,000 miles on, but I bought it brand new. I'm there you like, go. 
Like, really? Like, uh, that's what I ride now? <laughs> so, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, if you would have taken the guy five years ago and, and, and you know, now, huge 180. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you had told me what my life would be like today to, to me back then, I would have been like, you need to change your sobriety date because you're fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, man. Uh, look, and, and, yeah. and to, to go back to the club part, right? Um, so, I remember that meeting. And, um, you know, I remember uh, sitting down and talking to you guys about what the club was about and stuff like that. And, you know, you made up a really big valid point about like you didn't even know there were sober clubs. And so that's kind of why I'm doing this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that there is a lot of people out there that don't know that there are sober clubs out there because... Yeah sobriety recovery however you want to word it and motorcycle clubs usually don't go hand in hand yeah and i think that there's a there's a lot of people in the areas that you know maybe outside of our area funny story about that in a second that don't know that there's there's sober clubs out there which the irony of that is um i thought everybody around here knew that there were sober clubs yeah Apparently that's not the case. You just said it, and then also there was there was another gentleman that that uh, I talked to today that to, he didn't know. Yeah, and I'm going. You know, I thought everybody yeah. knew that there was. You know, so I started this because of us doing a trip down to New Orleans where we went to a meeting, and the, those people were completely mind blown that there was. I think there were six of us. Six guys in a motorcycle club riding up on Harleys that are clean and sober. <laughs> well, look, man, that's our thing. Yeah. And, you know, I know that motorcycle clubs and whatnot get a bad rap. But to me, us being in a club, having our, our, our brothers is like having uh, it's, it's, it's uh, recovery on steroids. Oh, it is. Because, you know... You got your list when you first come into rooms yep. and you got your people you can call and blah, blah, blah. Well, now maybe you have that original list and now you got, I don't know how, how many extra, I'm not <laughs> going to give a number, but yeah. of dudes that now are, you're in a club with that, that you can call any time of day, no matter what. Yeah. And they're going to be there for you because yeah. that's what, that's what it's about. It's about the brotherhood Yep. and it's about helping your brother no matter what. Yeah, a group of men that, you know, it's, and it's amazing how the brotherhood works because it's like not only they're there to help, but it's like they also help you keep you accountable. And right. that's one of the things that the the club did for me is um, the changes in me. Like I look back and a lot of the problems I had, like for the reason for the relapse relationship issues, like I was basically, you know, I was a grown man, but inside I was just a scared little boy. Like it was just everything was fear, you know, and just I couldn't you know, indecisive, uh, just so many shortcomings. Like I couldn't even list them all, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's neat by like being in the brotherhood, like what that's done to me, I learned to become accountable and learn how to like man up, like, you know, say what you mean, mean what you say, right. like, and just, you know, and get, you know, and if you're going to do something, just fucking get it done. Right. Like, you know, like I took him and Hall out of my, out of my vocabulary. Cause you know, that, you know, that used to be me back then. I'd be like, Oh, well, you know, then complained it like, you know, life sucks. There's nothing to do. Well, if you want something to do, fucking create something to do. You know, right. it's like, you know, like, uh, like we, you know, we've been having a blast this summer, man, you know, going out, doing different events, things like that. And it's like, yeah, you know, if you don't go out and look for it, you don't do it. It's not going to happen. So, right. Life is what you make it. Yeah, it is. And, and in all honesty, um, with, with being in a brotherhood, like we have, there's no reason for you not to be, um, bored or, or, to, or i'm sorry to be bored yeah whether it's hey man there might not be anything planned but i could call you up be like yo dude you want to ride down a wildwood today yeah all right let me call you know doc let me call you know yeah go down the list and next thing you know you got yeah 10 guys going to the lobster house getting shrimp <laughs> so <laughs> right it, it, yeah. it's it's amazing yeah um how long you been riding well, i've been riding since i was well, like I said, I had dirt bikes when I was five, six years old. So I've been riding my whole life. And I actually, um, I'll get back into when I 
the first time it came around the rooms, um, well, actually a little premature of that, um, I had a bad motorcycle accident. I had a, uh, like an enduro bike. And what happened was, is, um, I lost my car keys at a party. And then, uh, I wanted to go to this party they were having at a bar, like the next town over. So I was like, well, I'm not missing this, you know? So I, I took my dirt bike to the bar and I made it there. No problem drinking all night on the way home. I was literally a quarter mile from where I lived and the road turned and I didn't. <laughs> and, uh, I actually, I hit a tree. Uh, I went down into a stream and there was some kids partying. Cause it was actually out near Rowan. It was like college town. And they actually pulled me out in the police report. It just, the kids did CPR on me, mm. resuscitated me. Now this is probably like three o'clock in the morning. Like if those kids weren't there, I would have been dead. Yeah. But yeah, I wound up, um, I broke my shoulder blade in half. I did nerve damage in my other arm. I wound up, um, you know, getting a DUI of course, cause it was actually a funny story looking back on it. Cause like I was laying on my back and I'll never forget. I used to keep pony cans up the sleeves of my leather jacket and I popped one of them little slammers out and I was laying on my back and I go to try to take a sip of beer and I'll never forget the cop slapping it out of my hand. He's what are you doing? And I'm, I tried to convince the cop that the bike wasn't mine, <laughs> but I was, I was in bad shape at night. And, uh, you know, like I said, with the, and then when, um, you know, I came to and everything and wound up, uh, what happened was I lost use of both my arms for probably a good about month or so. Cause I had to go to therapy and get the movement back and everything. But I thought after that happened and I lost my license, well, you can't do nothing to me now. And then, um, what wound up, uh, what I did was I'd, I'd go to the bar, I'd get them they'd stick a fifth or whatever in my sling and I'd go home and I'd open it with my teeth, throw a straw in there and I'm good. Then when I started using my arms again, I found out what happens about how much more they could take away from you. Because I went out uh, one night with uh, some kids at a bar and uh, long story short, I came home the next day with detectives knocking on the door. And I was basically looking at getting uh, charged with um, possession of crack cocaine, soliciting prostitution, breaking and entering Grand Theft Auto. So it was a, it was a rough night. <laughs> And, uh, Jesus, dude. yeah. And, um, so I was basically there with the detective and they had an intervention and the gentleman that actually had the option to press the charges actually, you know, he knew me and he, um, that was the first time I heard he's like, you know, you're like Jekyll and Hyde. He goes, when you don't have booze in you, he goes, you're the nicest guy I've ever met. You have a heart of gold. As soon as you put that alcohol in you, like, like a switch goes off and you just turn into this whatever right and he actually said you know if you get help i'm not going to press charges and he dropped charges and that's my first got my introduction into aa and that's when i you know got my some time under my belt right so it's like that was my early recovery before the relapse okay so that's how that happened right on and then uh how old were you when you started riding on the street uh riding on the street i was probably 22 23 yeah yeah around there right my first bike was a uh, Honda Shadow 750. Okay. Not the newer ones, the cool looking ones. No, the older looking 80s one. <laughs> yeah. Same, <laughs> yeah. Man. yeah. So, I'm, I'm one of those guys that I don't care what you ride, dude, as long yeah. as you're riding. But, you know, yeah. I wave to everybody. Yeah, I was actually, um, in, <laughs> a guy in the program actually had a 1984 BMW R100 RT with, you know, full everything, like luggage rack, everything. And he's like, yeah, you can borrow it to take your rider's test. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jesus, what i took dude. my test on man on a freaking you know german nautilus <laughs> did you like, um did you ever do the the rider safety course no nah. no nah, actually i hung out with this guy in the program which unfortunately he's still out there doing his product research and development but uh we we were two peas in a pod we used to ride together everywhere and like he would just like we'd be going down the road he'd slam his brakes in front of me you know he'd take me out in the rain yeah, he would. Yeah. I remember the first time I rode in the rain, he actually made me go back and forth over the Bristol Bridge. <laughs> so, yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, he was my rider safety course. I but, uh, I recommend anybody out there that's riding um, to take the rider safety course, man. I um, I took it, and I had already been riding for years, uh, but I took a, a, a good chunk of time off from riding. Okay. So I what I what I wanted to do was I felt like um, it was gonna. Oh, I also never had a license to to, to ride a motorcycle. Oh. I, I rode for years with just a regular driver's license. Um, but when I got back into riding, I felt like 
that was going to be like a refresher for me. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest with you, um, you know, I'd been riding since I was like 19. And, uh, you know, I took that. I was 30-ish. So I don't remember. But, you know, man, I, uh, it was one of those things where like, they taught me stuff in there, dude, that, that I didn't even know. Oh. And then to, I gotta be honest with you, I, it, that thing saved my life, man. I oh. mean, I, I, I've been, uh, hit three times. I've went mm. down three times, you know, the second time there wasn't really much I could do. It was like, it was so quick that there was no reaction or, or like preemptive to, to stop it. I got, basically I got, I got side swiped. Oof. Uh, yeah. So it's, I didn't even see it coming. Um, but that, that definitely saved my life, man. And, and I tell everybody, look, if you're going to ride, you got to definitely take it. And if you've been riding, if you've already taken that, do the advanced rider safety course, which I would like to do what you have to, you have to do that on your own bike though. Oh, okay. And it's a little bit more money, but they also give you like more advanced maneuvers. So hmm. it, it's definitely worth it if you can get a group together to do that. But we've talked about that. As, as as the club before yeah i'll so, definitely be uh, interested in something like that yeah That'd because be cool. you know what man anything you can get to help you yeah. um you know combat the idiots that are on the road that oh, are yeah. paying attention yeah. that are texting and driving and you know uh or or don't want to give any space yeah you know i mean look <laughs> i want to be first to be at the red light <laughs> yeah you know like it, it drives me nuts um when people ride up onto the pack and they're like right they're right on your bumper and it's like you know you don't realize that uh, if one of us goes down, you are gonna kill us. Yeah, you're gonna run us over. It's the, the, yeah. you, you're you're not given enough space. Yeah. Like when I'm following a bike, I'll follow a bike in my car, and I'll give like a couple car links, and I'll try to ride with that guy to give him that buffer. So this way, you know, the idiots that are not paying attention. Um, and it pisses me off when somebody comes and they they cut into that gap. And I'm like, dude, I, I left that gap for a reason. I'm trying to protect this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people don't ride, don't think about stuff like no. that. They automatically think because you're a smaller little, you know, vehicle. Yeah. That's going to be, you're going to, you know, stop quicker and all this other stuff. And that's not, not no. necessarily true. I yeah. Mean, that's, yeah it's not physics. I mean, it, 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 it is physics rather. I'm sorry. You know, I only have two contact points. You got four. Yeah. You got a better chance to stop them than I do. Yeah, that's like, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, with uh, the way people are on the roads, I've lost two, you know, real good friends in the last year. Um, hmm. You know, Christian, I mean, he was he was a good, solid, solid guy. You know, well, the girl made a illegal left-hand turn, ran him over out of, out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, and then uh, my friend uh, Robert, you know, he was going down the road, you know, coming home from, a, you know, from the gym, you know, la-di-da, just cruising down, and a girl blasted out of her driveway without stopping right right into the road and friggin boom and you know like that but I mean, that's another what you know it's 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 unfortunate but um i mean yeah it's like you know people just got to be i really wish people would pay better attention out there on the roads so. yeah for sure man that's uh you know it's scary scary shit when yeah. when somebody makes eye contact with you and they still make a left turn yeah. in front of you which that's that happened to me yeah. twice and i was actually unfortunately that was how i actually met his entire family at the funeral you know because we always you know we hung out went to meetings together stuff like that i sponsored them and uh you know it was terrible to have like his sons like you know they cried and held me in their arms and they said you know thank to you we had the greatest gift of all we got to meet our father sober and i was like that's heavy man i was like wow yeah it's like wow and it's like you know i'm sorry this is how i had to meet you guys but right but i was like wow and i was, like, think about that and it's like that is like what a gift like if you think about it it's like you know that to, to, to have a you know family you're like wow like i got to meet my real dad you know right without you know without the shit in the system so but it's and that's huge man yeah. i mean um i think that that's one of those things with the, with the with finally getting your shit together and um you know there might have been you know people out there that that had years uh, or whatever where they didn't have to have, or they didn't have like a good relationship with parents, you know, uh, kids, yeah. their own kids, stuff like that. And, um, 
you it's know, like, yeah, even me personally getting sober, um, I spoke to my, my mother and stepdad for the first time in 14 years. Wow. Um, you know, I never, you know, my stepdad actually reached out to me on Facebook and I talked to him, you know, and, um, and I have a, a brother too, who I didn't talk to for several years, but him, I keep at length because he's still out there in his addiction. And I told him, said, Hey, listen, you know, when you're ready, we right. can have a relationship, but if you're out there doing your thing, you know, I, I can't talk to you, man. Like, you know, I can't, uh, you know. I, and I think that, um, you know, when I first got sober, dude, and, 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 you know, I got a little bit of time under my belt and I still had friends or whatever that were running and gunning, um, which, you know, you, you lose a lot of those friends, right? Like yeah. you really start to find out who your true friends are when you get sober yeah, or, or you're clean, whatever your, your, your issue is. Right. Yeah. It's funny. I actually found out on, uh, on Facebook that, uh, some people, the the bar I used to pretty much live at twenty four seven. Yeah. Well, a lot of people heard I had a stroke and they thought I died. <laughs> so it's like, well, and that's like, that's yeah. part for the course, though, <laughs> yeah. right? But so, so I got to fake my own death. So now I'm going to be sober. <laughs> so. I, I think that that's like when you when you first start, you know, getting your shit together and you're clean and sober now, and you're doing your thing and you're and you're getting your life back. Yeah. And the, you have those people that are coming up to you, or whatever, and and you realize that you could help them, but you can't help them yeah. because they're not ready to be helped yet. Yeah. Like that's why, you know, um, I think the, the shows like, uh, intervention and stuff like that. Yeah. Are, uh, have like this false thing going on. Yeah. They give because, people false hope. Look, man, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> You know, trick them into it. I, yeah. That's not the word I was looking for, but and, and you know, you all show up and everybody, ah, oh, surprise, yeah, right. But look, until unless that person really wants to get, yeah. you know, their shit together, it's not gonna work, man. No, it's, no, not, it's not gonna work, and it's unfortunate. And you know, we see it uh, in the room sometimes. And you know, uh, a couple episodes I talked about it with like you know, a meeting here locally that I went to with with BB. And it was just like all the young kids that were just like bragging about like how many times they've been here and blah, blah, blah. And And I'm like, man, dude, this is not a good place to be. Like if, if, if you're new coming in off the street, this is not where you need to be because this is, you need to go find uh, a meeting that's got a bunch of, you know, people with time in it to to help you out to, you know, to steer the ship, man. And look, I love beginner meetings. Because I there's there's always that little piece of you know keeping yourself green yeah and um you know I think it's I love it when you go to a good beginner meeting yeah and there's people there that are like wanting to help and try to get you to do what you got to do yeah well, that's uh me and a couple of the brothers actually go to one on Thursday nights and it's amazing because um it grew I mean there's probably like sixty to seventy people there every Thursday night and it's wow yeah like uh, there's a, a rehab that actually uses that for one of their meetings and you know it's just great and okay. for keep it green it's definitely one all right so yeah so we were talking about um you know uh leaving room and stuff like that and my camera shut off so i had um, we're gonna restart and uh you know kind of go back to what we were talking about but yeah so i i feel like you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that don't really pay attention to what we're doing. And they feel like, you know, because we're on bikes that, you know, we could stop faster, stuff like that. And it's it's not necessarily the case. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we got, um, you know, riders that we're friends with and stuff like that have went down, been killed. And, you know, it, it's uh, like, you know, even with just the, the situation that just happened this weekend in philly and out out in pittsburgh you know and uh look some of the times it's our own doing uh you know there's there's times where shit just happens with us and it's not always somebody else that's driving a car that 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 you know causes the problem uh but you know nine times out of ten it is somebody driving a car and that's that's the scary part man is that there's just people out there that don't don't really pay attention to what what we're doing and uh you know uh, it's hopefully one day that changes yeah. You know, and until then, it's just, you know what, as, as riders, um, we all understand, you know, the dangers of what, what, how, what riding is, 
Yeah. What bothers me is when there is people um, with passengers and stuff happens because that person that's on the back of that bike, you know, they got no control, no say of what, what's going to happen, what's happening at that point. You know, that's scary shit, dude. And, yeah. and you know, every time I've been hit, uh, Nikki's been on the back. Uh. And, the, you know, the first thing in my mind is, as shit's going south is protect her, do what you can. Is she okay? Or, you know, all that stuff to, just goes through your mind, and that's scary, dude. And, uh, you know, it is unfortunate, but it does happen. Um, you know, I feel like the, that taking any type of courses that you can um, – to practice and make yourself a better rider, a defensive rider, is is you know perfect. Oh yeah, um, you know. But look, you know, you look at things right now and you go, "Hey man, you're riding a brand new bike. Uh, you got a nice house. You're you have a good solid relationship. Um, you have a good relationship with your brothers." Uh, your club brothers, um, you know, you have good relationship with most of your family. I think that those are the things that people need to see. Yeah. Um, I think that those are the things that people need to see about the club. You know, I think that we motorcycle clubs get a bad rap and, uh, um, you know, it's not that way. It's not, this isn't TV, folks. This isn't Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> you know, we're normal guys that, that are out having a good time yeah. and trying to enjoy life, man. And, you know, I wish that we could get more people that are clean and sober out there that ride to, to, to come on board and be a part of it. I understand look you know people that don't want to do it or whatever it's it's a lot of commitment man some some people just don't have the time to do it <clears throat> sorry i'm still recovering from my cold what i what i i guess i don't understand is there's the guys that are clean and sober and then they go join a hog group or something mm. like why why wouldn't you come on board and hang out and and do what we're doing I mean, to each his own, dude. Yeah. I, it's it is what it is. Um, and honestly, man, like I, I never had a problem with anybody that's like an independent rider or whatever because I I get it. I know what kind of commitment it is for me. You know what I mean? And there's times where I'm like, damn, dude. I, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's been a weird summer for me. Um, I'm not doing as much with the club right now because I'm still recovering from back surgery. Yeah. So and that sucks too, man. I, I like you know it kills me right now not riding. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's got to suck. Yeah, I mean, like, you guys are all posting pictures of going here, going, I'm like, I'm riding my couch, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So We'll put apes on your coffee table. Hey, you know so. what, though? I, look, as much as it sucks ri and not riding this year, um, and it sucks that I got to go through the recovery process of this whole back thing, uh, you know, hopefully in the end, I won't have as much back pain because I, I i was told that it's probably not going to get rid of all your pain but man i look forward to the day that i could ride on a long trip and not have to be like you know all hunched over like an old man at the end of the ride because my back hurts you know um so it, it it is what it is if that's what i got to do that's what i got to do i got i got to learn how to do this you know i didn't know how to do any of this prior to may i knew how to do audio because i was a sound guy yeah and even now, like the audio is different than it was. You, what would it be, for, you know, for doing live sound? Um, this is completely different. But you know, hey, look, um, you know, it's just you got to kind of you got to take the good with the bad, man. Yeah, yeah, that's what's actually neat. When I saw you first started doing this, I was like, oh wow, man, like that's cool. And then like you look, and well, nobody's really done this. I was like, this is pr pretty neat, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's there's other people out there that are doing podcasts that are that are strictly you know f certain topic. Yeah, but there's nobody that's doing what I'm doing, which yeah. is you know I'm I'm looking at the recovery part and I'm looking at the 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 rider part. Yeah, I'm look I'm not looking at the program specifics. I'm looking at the the, the merge in the middle. Yeah, 
because that's where we fall. Yep. Right. Like, and that's what I want people to understand is it's, it's about that. Yeah. I want to see, I want people to see how good a lifestyle that we have doing this, you know? And, um, like there's repercussions for not staying on, on the course. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Hey, hey, you got people to call if you're feeling like, oh, hey, man, I'm, I'm twitchy. I feel like I might want to drink. I might have to do this. I might. All right, dude. Well, we got people yeah. to call. Yeah, and there's I'm... also like, if you do that, you're going to give up that. Nah, I, I work too yeah. hard to get that. I don't want to do that. I was like when um, I'll never forget the morning my friend Robert died. I was on my way to work. Uh -huh. um, and I called I called a brother. I was like, listen, man, I'm in tears. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. He goes. What are you doing right now? I'm like, well, I'm going to work. My brother goes, you ain't going to fucking work. Get your ass over my house right now. Yeah. And that man, he put off what he had to do all day. He spent the whole day hanging out with me. We went for a ride. He took me out to lunch. Right. By the end of the day, I learned that, like, I was looking back and, like, celebrating, you know, my friend's life. Realizing that, you know, life goes on. Yeah. Things happen. But it's like, you know, our minds can take us south at any time. But it's like if I didn't have that brother to reach out to, you know, where could I could have gone to work, been like blah blah blah, fuck this, fuck that, been mad at the world all day. But now nah, instead, I I reached out, and that was actually a problem I had in my early recovery. Like I was always the guy that never reached out. I always bottled it up inside, and figured, ah, people are too busy. They don't they don't need to deal with my small bullshit. But what I never realized was, you know, a single grain of sand enough will build a brick, and enough bricks can make the Great Wall of China. So every little thing could be something. So it's like, you know, if, if I, if I got something going on inside, I got, I grab the phone, you know, I pick up, I'll reach out to a brother. Sometimes we laugh about it. Sometimes you're like, yeah, okay. Okay. You know, right. yeah, I'm fucking nuts. So, yeah. But having that, uh, relationship that you can, you know, reach out and talk to another person like that. And it's, I mean, it's, it was funny cause uh, we um, all chipped in for the uh, Powerball last week you know, joke around. Yeah, we're going to be millionaires. I said to my brothers and I was like, listen, I was like, you know what? We all fucking won the lottery when we met each other. It's like, cause the, the relationship we have with other men that we could reach out, help each other, the things we do. Yeah. Money can't buy that. Yeah. So, it's just a beautiful thing. And you know, I look back sometimes and I go, I, I kind of wonder if, if, um, had I not had this, had, would I have stayed sober? You know what I mean? Um, but I also, I also feel like that there's times where, um, you know, I got brothers around me that have dealt with a lot of heavy duty stuff and they stayed sober. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what, man, if you guys, you know, my little minuscule issue that I'm having right now is nothing like compared to what you had before. So, mm. I, um, you know. I don't know, but, um, I tell you what, man, before we wrap this up, uh, is there anything that you would want to talk about that we didn't cover? No, um, not really. I mean, the only thing I'd like to throw out there is, um, I mean, I was actually, uh, at the meeting the other day and I was talking to one of the, the clients and, uh, he said something that I've heard a couple of times in the rooms. He goes, you know what, man? He goes, so you guys are, are sober and you ride Harleys. I was like, yeah. He goes, you're a real fucking badass. <laughs> I was like, well, thanks, man. But yeah, and that, it is true, man, because I look around. It's like, yeah, the real fucking badasses are in the rooms because anybody can, anybody can give up. But, you know, a real man can fucking pick himself up and, you know, and build himself and, and you know, restart life. Yeah. So that's really all I got, Buck. And, you know, it was an honor to come out of, you know, and do this with you. It really was. No, nah, man, I appreciate it, dude, and, uh, you know, I thank you for coming out. I know, uh, you know, I had a lot of stuff going on today, and yeah. it was an issue getting up yeah. here, but you know what? I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it was all right. You know, just a bunch of guys get to laugh at me trying to roller skate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I want to thank you all for stopping by, man. Hopefully you stuck it out to the end, and I know the camera shut off, but uh, we're still working through some issues here. I do appreciate you listening, and, uh, you know, it is, you know, I, I, I do appreciate the likes and the subscribes, man. It does really help us out. And, you know, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. So thanks for stopping right. by. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Thank you. Yep.